Okay, so in this lovely video, we're going to look at colloidal dispersions, sometimes called colloids, versus suspensions, and how those are different than actual solutions. Okay? All right, so colloidal dispersions and suspensions. Okay, neither one of these are true solutions. All right? They are not true solutions. Solutions are the, you know, the, the things that we deal with in lab all the time. You have your hydrochloric solution, you have your uh, whatever, okay? You have your actual solutions. Colloidal dispersions, colloids, and suspensions are different, and here's how. Colloidal dispersions, colloids, okay, are similar. These are the most similar to uh, solutions, but they are not true solutions. Okay, these are not true solutions, okay, because a material, okay, because the material is dispersed, not dissolved. Okay, what the heck does that mean, right? So basically that just means that the particles that are, that are like your solute, okay, we actually have a different word for it in a colloidal dispersion, but if you could, you know, think about a solute and a solvent making up your solution, right? Your solute dissolves in the solvent it's completely homogeneously mixed and, and you know they're all mixed in together. Those solute particles are small enough that they all kind of mix in nice and evenly. For colloidal dispersions, the things that act like the solute are just actually too big. They're just too big to be dissolved. They're dispersed and they're actually dispersed evenly. That's why these act like solutions, okay? But those solute particles, solute, okay, are, are just too big. So, it is in fact homogeneous. However, the particles are small enough, so like how to tell a, a colloid from a suspension, okay? So the particles are small enough that you cannot see them with your naked eye, okay? Uh, they do not settle with gravity. Okay, so they won't like settle out like muddy water, okay? You know, the mud and muddy water would settle out to the bottom, uh, but that's not what a colloid would do, okay? So these particles would not settle, and it can't be filtered. So you can't filter out those particles. You, you know, they're not big enough to filter, but they're too big to be a solution, okay? This is kind of the weirdo in-between guy, all right? And instead of calling these particles solute, we call them the dispersed phase. Okay, it's just a new fancy way of saying what's basically like your solute. Okay, the particles that are dispersed in this colloid, not dissolved in the colloid, okay? Actually, a, a good example of a colloid is milk, okay? Milk has uh, fat particles. <laughs> Never going to want to drink milk again, right? But, but milk has these fat particles that are too big to actually be dissolved in the milk itself, okay? So you have uh, a colloidal dispersion. You have this dispersed phase of the fat particles. Neat, okay? All right. So that's, that's the basic stuff of a dispersion, okay? versus a uh, suspension, okay? So a suspension is definitely not a true solution because this is actually heterogeneous, okay? Uh, a suspension is a heterogeneous mixture and it does have dispersed particles. All right, but they are heavy enough to settle with gravity. Okay, so think of like muddy water for this one, all right? I don't know why I need to write this out. <laughs> muddy water. All right, so think of like muddy water, okay? So no matter how much, if you had a, like a beaker, why would you have a beaker of muddy water? Whatever, bear with me, all right? You had a beaker of muddy water. You stir that water, you stir that beaker, 
okay? And you get that muddy water nice and mixed as evenly as you possibly can. It doesn't matter. The second you stop stirring it and you let gravity do its thing, those dirt and mud particles are going to start filtering out, right? They're going to start settling down to the bottom. You're going to get all this sediment on the bottom of your, of your beaker, and you'll have some clear water on the top. You can stir it up again. doesn't matter. It'll still settle down to the bottom. That's a suspension. That's the main way to tell a suspension from a colloid, okay, or a suspension from a solution, all right? Now, the way to tell a colloid from a solution is slightly more difficult, all right? Now, how do you tell a colloid from a solution, okay, is the light test, okay, which we call the Tyndall test, Tyndall test, which is basically just you shine a light on the solution, okay, so I am very sorry for my pictures again, okay, so if this was a true this will be a true solution. This will be your colloid. Okay, or your colloidal dispersion. All right. So if I had a light, oh God, here's my picture of a flashlight. <laughs> okay. Okay, there's the button to turn on the flashlight. Okay. It's beautiful. There you go. Okay, you turn on the flashlight and. Da, da, da. Okay, light's going to shine onto the solution. What you would actually see in a colloid is you would see the light lines. Okay, you would actually be able to see the light shining through in a colloid. Think like fog. Okay, um, would be a really good example, right? You have your fog lights, you can actually see the beam of light in the fog. Okay, that's a colloid. All right, you, you, you can physically see it. And that's because these particles that are too big to, to dissolve, but they're, they're still dispersed, right? They're, it's, a, it's in the dispersion phase. They're not heavy enough to settle out, but they're not small enough to be dissolved. The light photons, the light particles actually bounce off those, which is why you can actually see the outline, or like the beam of light in like fog, okay? The other really good example of colloids would be blood, okay? Which makes sense for what we would wanna know. Um, considering this is chem 2A, right? So blood would, would be a, a colloid. It would be a colloidal dispersion, okay? And, uh, and that would be one way to test. A solution, however, if I had a light and I shone it on a solution, I would not see, uh, I would not see these lines. I would not see the beam of light. Instead, I would just have like the whole, the whole thing would, you know, light up. <laughs> My pictures are just lovely, okay? But if you could imagine, and if you don't believe me, go get a glass of water and shine a light on the glass of water, okay? Or uh, make it salt water or something. Dump some salt. Why would you do this? I don't know, but do it. Do it at home, okay? Dump some salt in your glass of water. Mix it up because you're making a true solution. Take a flashlight. Take your iPhone. Turn on the light and put it to the glass. You will not be able to see beams of light through your glass of salt water, okay? You won't. If, uh, nope, don't go get blood. Try it with milk, okay? <laughs> Try it and see what happens if you had a glass of milk. You should be able to see lines. You should be able to see a beam of light that would prove to you the difference between a colloid versus a solution, okay? And, and so we've got colloidal dispersion, not a true solution, and then you have a suspension, which is not either one, because it'll settle out. There's a really nice table on page 224 of your book that helps you kind of break down, you know, true solutions versus colloidal dispersions versus suspensions. Okay, so if you want extra help, look there. Okay, good luck.